Why hello you lovely little peppercorns, my name's Noah Lee, god of game criticism and lord of excellent taste, and Frog on Encore is a sort of sequel, sort of standalone expansion to Mulgado's 2022 3D platformer Frog on, and it's a bit baffling to say the least. As I've said many times throughout my long career as an independent video game critic, 3D platformers are one of my favorite genres. There's just something about the simplistic joy of running and jumping in 3D space and collecting various MacGuffins while honing your skills that lights my brain up with glee. Yet something that's always bothered me about the last decade or so of 3D platforming releases is that almost every noteworthy title can trace their roots directly back to the more sandboxy, collectathon style of 3D platforming set down and popularized by the likes of Super Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie, while the more linear level by level format stemming from Crash Bandicoot and the original Spyro the Dragon are all but missing, with the exception of more hardcore oriented standouts like Demon Turf, of course. So imagine my surprise when in the summer of 2022 I stumbled upon an underrated little gem by the name of Frogun, a game that I ended up critiquing on my old channel shortly after its release and one that I found to be not only a breath of fresh air as far as 3D platformers are concerned, but one that gladly took the reins of this lesser appreciated branch of the genre while spearheading the low poly, low resolution 3D retro aesthetic mere months before it became one of the indie scene's biggest fads. Frogun, as I alluded to in my old critique, linked at the end of this video and in the description, and probably right here if I remember to put it there, is not only the best 3D platformer since Super Mario Odyssey, but also ended up as my favorite game of the year. Oh, right, second favorite game of the year. Still, if you're a runner-up to From Software, you must be doing something right. The de-emphasizing of both running and jumping in favor of a grab mechanic via the titular frog gun that ended up spiritually similar to my childhood favorite Wrist Star, albeit in a 3D environment, made not only for a fun little gem of a game, but one that was also far deeper than a surface level glance would reveal. This depth and nuance led to a game that not only gets better, more challenging, and more fun as you learn the subtleties of the frog gun and Renata's character weight, but also is a game whose level design fundamentally changes the better you get as you begin to see shortcut possibilities and enjoyable self-directed challenges you were previously blind to that can shave a few extra seconds off of your time if you care at all about speedrunning or simply going up against the game's time trials. This is something I've been hearing about for months now from the Penny's Big Breakaway fans who weren't too happy with my critique. The most common complaint was that I just wasn't good enough at the game to get it, and that once you learn the nuances of Penny's controls, the game becomes a lot of fun because you can skip large sections of each stage, exploit the physics to fling yourself from platform to platform, and maintain your speed, and that once you reach this high level of play, the time trials that were previously superfluous now become the core experience. And you know what? I agree with that assessment. So listen up, Penny fans, because I'm throwing you a bone here. Kind of. Because one, I do suck at Penny's Big Breakaway, as I'm not gonna bother learning the finer intricacies of a game I dislike, and two, I fully admit that watching some expert gameplay of it really does make it seem like a lot of fun. Hell, apparently even watching my dismal performance makes the game look pretty fun, as I received well over a dozen comments from people saying that they weren't interested in playing the game at all until they watched my video, even though I clearly didn't like it. Huh, it's almost as if real video game criticism that takes this medium seriously as an art form has little bearing on sales figures, since the whole point is to explore the relationship between artist and audience, game and player, rather than come to some arbitrary quality consumer assessment to help you make a purchasing decision, and that regardless of how I personally feel about a game, I want my audience to go out and play it, and actually, I expect you to go out and play it so you can explore your own relationship with the game and its developer. Weird, it's like I know what I'm doing or something. Anyway, part of me can empathize with these Penny fans who were upset with my take on the game, as this is almost exactly how I feel about Frog Gun, that the game really only comes into its own once you begin to master its nuances and, in fact, becomes recontextualized into something far deeper and more profound once you begin to interact with its time trials and attempt to speedrun it. However, there's one key difference. Frog Gun requires you to master it, whereas Penny's Big Breakaway doesn't. Frog Gun is designed from start to finish to teach you its ins and outs, to act as sensei and mold you into an expert player or ring you out enough that it'll gladly smile and wave goodbye as you rage quit away for the final time. The further you go into Frog on the tighter and more intricately designed the levels become and the more segments appear that, upon a first glance, look damn near impossible to traverse until you've given them a few attempts and get a feel for it. By the time you reach the end of the game, if you reach the end of the game, it has expertly taught you all of its intended nuances and shown you what to look out for if you wish to try your hand at the time trials or speed run the game or simply just give it a second playthrough or a third or a fourth. Penny, however, doesn't. Even the people who staunchly defend this game are often quick to admit that it does a terrible job of teaching you the ins and outs of Penny's moveset to the point that you can go through the entire game, as I supposedly did, playing it unideally. Real quote. 
And once again, they're right, but that's on Evening Star, not on me. If your game is designed in such a way that you can easily finish it without ever having to utilize any of the intended features that supposedly make it great, then it's a failure, which was ultimately the conclusion I came to, that the developers just didn't have the artistic bravery to design a game around the very mechanics they were interested in exploring for fear of alienating more mainstream crowds as the difficult to master but deeply rewarding gameplay that the penny nerds of the world are quick to point to as proof of the game's success is the very kind of gameplay that would have been too difficult and abstruse for the average gamer had it been required to master in order to play the vast majority of the game, let alone beat it, so they settled on this limp dick, artistically vapid middle ground instead. Frog Gun, however, forces you to get good or put down the game. It isn't afraid to push its mechanics to their very limit and requires some level of mastery from the player in order to complete. It isn't afraid to alienate players or frustrate them or be a commercial failure for being too niche. Frog Gun has integrity. Frogun has heart. Which is why it's so goddamn baffling to me how Frogun Encore could end up going down the same artistically bankrupt road as Penny's Big Breakaway and try to walk this asinine middle ground between trying to be accessible to the masses and being deep enough to allow for niche expert play, focusing on holding the hands of people who probably won't enjoy and shouldn't be playing your game anyway at the cost of a tighter and deeper experience for the core players who otherwise would. And I can't stand when games try to do this, as it's about the furthest you can get from the heartful design I personally advocate for, as you're far too concerned with what the reaction to your game will be to properly focus on the core experience your muse wants you to explore. As far as I'm concerned, if you're even considering the viewpoint of the potential audience for your work while you're crafting it, you're already setting yourself up for failure. Playtesting is one thing, you want to make sure your game actually functions, but any artist slash game developer worth their salt will tell you that you should make the kind of game that you personally want to play and hope that others will want to play it as well, i.e. don't play to the gallery. And I very much get that sense with the original Frog Gun, it feels like a game made by the creator for himself, the kind of game that he personally wanted to play to the point that it almost feels like releasing the game to a wider audience was only a minor goal, even though that probably wasn't the case considering he funded the game via Kickstarter. Yet Frog Gun Encore doesn't have this feeling, it feels more like a game made in response to the original success, however minor, and the criticisms levied at it, like, look at me, I'm a real game dev now, so I need to make sure my game is as accessible as possible and fix all of the issues people had with the original, never once questioning whether those criticisms were valid or not, or if they would vastly change the experience that made the original so special. This is seemingly the case with Frog on Encore, as one of the biggest criticisms of its predecessor was that the camera and the level design often clashed with each other, leading to frustrating moments where a piece of the level blocks your view, or the game requires you to adjust the camera while in mid-air in order to pull yourself to safety. And while I do agree that this was a bit of a problem, I also think it was greatly overblown by more mainstream reviewers and players since the core design of the game forces you to learn how to use the camera's idiosyncrasies to your advantage, as adjusting it in mid-air while grappling across a series of particularly perilous precision platforms is a skill that must be learned in order to play at the higher level that really makes the game come alive. So how does Frog on Encore respond to these criticisms? Does it further refine the camera controls and polish them to a mirror sheen? Does it playtest the hell out of each level to cut down on the number of moments when the level design clashes with the camera? Or does it accept that this perceived flaw of the original was merely a necessary trade-off to delivering the kind of experience that Mogato and his muse wish to craft? <laughs> it does none of those. Instead, it opts to reinvent the wheel by introducing a now fixed camera and accompanying level design that drastically changes the core experience of the game. To be fair, on paper this camera change does seem like a good idea, as this allows the player to focus more on the platforming rather than trying to get the best view, but in reality the removal of the ability for the player to directly control the camera themselves has only crippled the ability to fine tune not only your jumps but also your frog gun shots while introducing a whole host of new issues that not only weren't present in the original game but are also much more problematic and prevalent than the quote unquote problem they attempt to solve. The biggest issue brought about by this change comes down to the structure of each level as Frog on Encore is now forced to design each stage with everything of importance, having to face roughly the same direction as well as forego too sharp of a change in verticality as you move throughout the level. This vastly cuts down on the amount of structural interest brought on by the level design and makes each stage feel wholly similar and artificially crafted rather than the wildly different and more organically structured set pieces found in the original game. There are moments where the camera will rotate quite a bit to give you a side view necessary to move through a segment of a level 
level, but the amount of level rotation is vastly reduced, and the level design suffers greatly because of it. In game, let's compare this pseudo Greek level of Frog on Encore to this Dark Temple Cave from the original. The latter has twists and turns, and a much greater use of verticality, giving you the sense that this isn't just the level of a video game, but a place that has a logic and story behind it, a greater purpose that makes sense in the context of the game's world building. Yet, Encore's representative level has none of this personality and texture. It's sanitized and grid like, screaming rigid video game design through and through, not only by its structure, but also by the logic of having to have every statue, staircase, platform, and enemy all facing the same direction so as to make them visible to the now static camera and its limited viewing angles. Though, there's another issue brought about by this change in perspective that's less foundational, but far more frustrating. In my critique of the original game, I mentioned that due to the simplistic designs of Frog Gun's low poly graphics, combined with the low resolution textures and limited shadow effects, there was often the issue of depth perception that one had to contend with, as at a glance, it was occasionally difficult to tell where exactly in 3D space an object or platform was in relation to Renata, such as here where this platform is actually right next to you but slightly elevated, yet could also be interpreted by your brain as being a few feet away and on the same plane as its neighboring platforms. These issues were few and far between, but when they did crop up, a simple turning of the camera was often enough for you to gain the perspective necessary to know exactly where they were and make your jump with confidence. However, this problem that was once minimal now has become a major issue, and even after two back-to-back -back playthroughs, and even a third while writing this critique, I still find myself struggling with depth perception in Encore. Are these platforms right next to me, but below me, or are they a space or two away and at the same height as my feet? Unless you take a leap of faith, you'll never know for sure. This depth issue makes going outside the bounds of each level's intended path to do some speedrunning based less on skill as it was before, but now based solely on trial and error, as the more grid-based structure of each level actually makes taking large shortcuts much easier than they were in the previous game, but also more frustrating to learn, as due to the camera issues, you now have to take several leaps into the blue to learn the timing needed to grab the edges of platforms and hoist yourself up, since it's much more difficult to tell how far you've fallen after jumping off of a platform. That is, if the game will even allow you to take a shortcut at all, as for some odd reason, Mulgato felt the need to add a myriad of death boxes to the game that are often only inches below a platform, preventing you from dropping too far and exploiting the potential level skip you'd otherwise be able to make use of. To be fair, you do get a feel for it after a while, but it's still all about timing, trial and error, and memorization, rather than the more holistic and scrappy think-on-your-feet sort of playstyle of the original. And these two issues brought about by the change in camera has completely altered the core experience to the point that the two games are similar only on a surface level. This is a real shame, as much of the depth, perhaps even most of the depth, that Frogun had to offer was brought about due to the more freestyle level design and limited core moveset, yet here in Encore, it almost feels as if Mulgato interpreted all the interesting skips and advanced abilities of the Frog Gun, such as wall climbing and what I'm going to call drop grabbing, not as maneuvers for expert players to find and master, but as mistakes that needed to be corrected. Rather than leaning into this aspect and diving deeper and building upon the core moveset to accommodate more, he instead overhauled the whole experience into a much more streamlined, yes, but also far more shallow and artistically bland game. Even if the aforementioned abilities and tactics of wall climbing or falling great lengths and grabbing a platform just in the nick of time, or even just hopping onto a wall and skipping a segment of the level were unintentional oversights on the part of the developer, they undeniably made Frog Gun a better and deeper game, so to see all but the most basic maneuvers removed in favor of adding worn out and, quite frankly, boring mechanics like a double jump is more than a little sad, especially since its inclusion seems not like a new ability added to further flesh out the gameplay, but as a bandage to solve the platforming issues brought about by the new camera and more rigid level design. Taking all these foundational changes into consideration, Frog Gun Encore ends up as little more than a shallow facsimile of its predecessor, despite the two games looking so similar upon a first glance, as everything about its core design, from the new abilities to the faster walking speed and greater jump height to the very structure of each and every level, actively discourages the use of the primary mechanic of the Frog Gun. Sure, you do still need to use it, but Encore is designed in such a way that walking and double jumping is so effective that you don't want to use the Frog Gun unless you're forced to. Using the double jump and doing some standard hop and bop platforming to boost off of vases and enemies is what the core design of the game is more in line with. The Frog Gun, the very thing that makes the game and its predecessor noteworthy in the first place, now feels like an afterthought, something only for expert players to make use of while more mainstream 
same audiences can just jump their way through most of the game. This is exactly what I was talking about in my Penny's Big Breakaway critique when I said that the level design just doesn't match the character you play as. The level design doesn't force you to learn and utilize the expert maneuvers that actually make the game interesting. Instead, it allows you to quite easily make it through the entire game through standard 3D platforming, only rarely having to interact with the core mechanics the developers were actually interested in exploring. Like Penny, you can pull off some crazy cool stunts that bend the game to your very will, and in my second and third playthroughs and during the time trials I did just that thanks to my skills carrying over from the first game, but it's likely that anyone coming to this game without having played through the original will never obtain the level of skill necessary to see these stages as the unique playgrounds of opportunity they actually are. Unlike before, and just like Penny's Big Breakaway, you have to learn them yourself, and that's even assuming you realize there's actually more to learn and a more interesting way to play the game. This would be fine, I suppose, if the, let's call it primary gameplay, i.e. the standard running and jumping segments that make up the majority of the game, were doing anything interesting, but they're not. At its core, Frog on Encore is little more than a bog-standard 3D platformer in the vein of Super Mario 3D Land until you're skilled enough to interact with it as more. That's the double-edged sword of designing your game to accommodate more mainstream players while also trying to focus on delivering a core niche experience, that you end up pleasing no one as most mainstream players will only ever see your game as a basic rehash of games they've played before and lose interest before they interact with the core experience you actually wanted to explore, while your niche players who get what your game is all about and should be rewarded with higher heights and deeper depths of challenging niche gameplay are instead given a watered-down experience that has a bunch of unnecessary and basic filler that only distracts from the core of what drew them to your game in the first place. Rogan Encore feels like it was watered down to be easier and more streamlined so as not to alienate new players, a game that was playtested by a multitude of people of different skill levels to accommodate as many players as possible, rather than with the goal of satisfying the developer themselves, a game that lost confidence in its core mechanic and chose to crank up the movement speed of Renata and give her a bog-standard double jump in a desperate attempt to make it feel more like a real 3D platformer, a game that feels ashamed of the rough edges and idiosyncrasies of its predecessor that made it the magnificent little gem that it is. Look, if you want to make a game that appeals to the masses, then make a game for the masses. If you want to make a game that appeals to a small group of dedicated players, then make a game for a small group of dedicated players. You can't do both, and nothing has killed the artistic value of more games with interesting niche mechanics than the pursuit of this very goal. It killed Penny, now it's killed Frogon. But here's the thing, I still kinda like Frog on Encore, though more for what it could have been than for what it actually is. I know it's been around two thirds of this critique, complaining about the changes that were made and contrasting them with the previous game that I loved so much, but despite all of that, around halfway through my first playthrough, I found myself really getting into the groove of the game, though never quite to the level of investment I got with its predecessor. And that probably bears mentioning as to why my take on Encore is the way it is, as after publishing my critique of the original game, I ended up going on a pretty big frog on bender and got really, really good at the game, like to the point that I was speedrunning it at least once a day for a couple of weeks and getting to the point where I could beat the game in just over 50 minutes, which is actually good enough to qualify me for the number five spot on froggunspeedrun.com rankings if I would have recorded and submitted this time. However, after that two week bender, I put the game down and haven't touched it since. I'm just not the kind of gamer who sticks with one game for very long, and if I'm being honest, going back to playing it after playing it secret was a bit rough. Part of this was simply because my skills had atrophied since I had last played, but the biggest issue was the fact that, having just come off of playing Frog on Encore, I was now so accustomed to the new abilities introduced in that game that I sort of forgot how sparse the original game is. In Frog on, you can pick up objects and certain enemies to throw them, and you can latch onto stuff to pull yourself towards whatever you've grabbed, and that's it. No other maneuvers are given to you except those derived from this small pool of intended abilities like the aforementioned wall climbing and drop grabbing. And and controlling the camera, obviously. But in Frog on Encore, you can now grab the edge of a platform and hoist yourself up, latch onto a wall and release mid-flight to fling yourself greater distances, and pick objects and enemies up and then use them mid-jump to boost yourself to greater heights and gain some horizontal distance, and then follow that up with either a grab or a double jump, abilities that I now sorely miss upon my return to the original game, and I can't help but wonder what an exceptional experience we could have had if only Mogato had chosen to add these abilities to the more freeform design of the original, rather than craft them along
alongside a far more streamlined and structured game such as this. And I think that's my biggest takeaway with Frog on Encore, that it's just too rigidly designed to have that same level of artistic depth that its predecessor had. For all the exceptional maneuvers it added that greatly increase Renata's movement abilities and create opportunities for new and challenging level design and scenarios, it takes away an equal amount of freedom and trust in the player to find their own route through a level, unless that route was first thought of and sanctioned by the developer himself. Think you can make that jump? Nope, I don't want you to, so here's a death box that prevents you from dropping far enough to grab the ledge. Want to climb over that wall? Nope, I put an invisible barrier there because I want you to interact with my carefully constructed world. Want to use the frog gun multiple times in midair to climb a wall or grab objects and expertly maneuver around the level? Nope, I made it so you can only use the frog gun twice per jump and can't boost off of an object you've grabbed while in midair. Don't want you to get too crazy now. <sighs> This is another one of those games that I'm just so torn on. In a lot of ways, Frog on Encore is an improvement on its predecessor. The new abilities are a treat, if a bit underutilized. The bosses are much better, though still not great. The visuals and audio are several steps ahead of what was already spectacular, and some of the level design really is quite good, despite the limitations now brought on by the now fixed camera angles and different moveset. But it's also a far shallower game, and I don't just mean because of the more flattened level layouts, as most of the nuance of the original is just gone and replaced with the whims of a developer who clearly became much more technically competent while making this game, but also seemingly got it in his head that if something slips through the cracks and isn't intended of or thought of by himself, then that aspect would equate to a failure on his part as a developer. This is a game that has been refined and reworked to the point of sanitation, where all of the rough edges that could have made it interesting have been sanded down to the point that the game has no more texture, no more interactive character, while many of its frustrating facets were overlooked and left intact. A game that was clearly playtested by far too many people who either didn't understand the first game or clearly didn't have the skill necessary to provide useful feedback, and a developer who took their criticisms far too close to heart rather than just shrugging his shoulders and continuing on with his vision, instead attempting to craft a game for the masses rather than for himself as he once did, viewing his previous work with disdain and a desire to take things in a different direction not because he's following his heart and trusting the muse, but out of fear of making the same mistakes he wrongly believes he made the first time around. And in doing so, he created something that is enjoyable, that is impactful in its own way, that does have more artistic value and purpose than your average indie 3D platformer, but it's also empty inside, colder and more calculated, and afraid to embrace the deeper purpose of the heart that once beat inside it, a heart now made sickly and arrhythmic when it was once proud and thunderous. Despite how it may seem, I do still like Frog on Encore. I still think it's a pretty good game and definitely worth a playthrough. My criticisms come from a place of love for the original and a hopeful desire to see what Mulgato makes next as he's already made what I would consider to be one of the best 3D platformers of the modern era, perhaps even number three right after Super Mario Odyssey and A Hat in Time, so I know he has what it takes to make a truly exceptional game as he's already done it, and I'm hoping that this is just a small misstep in what will eventually be a long and storied career as an artist working within this medium, but as is, Frog and Encore is merely a decent piece of entertainment in the shadow of what was formerly a great work of art, and that's a real shame. I'm Noah Lee, God of Game Criticism, and thus have I spoken.